extent reports are a great way of analyzing test results. In this video, I'll show you how to make your reports even better by adding cross-browser testing information to them. You're watching Automate Now, I'm Marco Cruz. Let's dive in. In this video, I'm responding to a viewer request. Tahir wants to know how to add browser-specific information to the extent report. He's running his test on multiple browsers, and he wants to be able to filter the information on extent report based on the browser. Thank you, Tahir, for this question. Now let's go to the code. In my last video, I showed you guys how to use a testng.xml file to run our test on multiple browsers. Here we have this file in which I specified two tests, this one here and this one here. Notice that I'm passing a parameter here that says browser, and I'm saying that the browser should be Chrome. This one says the browser should be Firefox. Additionally, we have this class called base tests, in which we have this before method. This before method is the one that receives the browser information, and it passes it to our test. And let's have a look at the test that we used. It's this one over here in this class, test homepage. I have this test called test logo. And this test is going to the automatenow.io homepage and making sure that the automatenow logo is displayed on the screen. This is the page right here, and this is the logo that we're talking about. So we're checking that this logo is displayed on the screen. The test is going to pass if it finds the logo and fail if it doesn't find it. And the way I have configured this framework is to take a screenshot anytime that a test fails. It then adds that screenshot to the extent report with additional test information. Since I know this test is going to pass, I want to make sure that it fails so that we're adding information to the extent report. So I'm going to change this assertion from assert true to assert false. Let's now have a look at that method that takes a screenshot. Over here, I have this class called test listener. I'm going to open up this class. And notice that here, I'm creating a new extent report object along with the Spark reporter. If we scroll down here, we're going to find this method called on test failure. This is the one that's responsible for taking the screenshot when the test fails. Please check out the video card on the screen to learn how this method works. I'm going to scroll down a little bit more. And here, I'm going to find the information on extent report. This right here is what adds all of the information to the extent report. For example, we're adding the screenshot. We're also adding categories. We also add the stack trace along with more information. Let us go back to the test. So Tahir wants to know how to add the browser information to the extent report. And to facilitate that, we're going to add grouping information to this test. So here I'm going to say test, and then I'm going to say groups. The name of the group is going to be the name of the browser that I want this test to run on. So I'm just going to say Firefox here. So you can think of this group as the category for my test. Because if you go back over here to this test listener, this is where we assign a category to our test. And notice that what I'm doing is here, I'm grabbing the group information from the test. And I'm using that as a category. Once we run the test and look at the extent report, I'm going to show you what I mean by this. I'm going to reuse this test to add more categories. So for example, I'm going to copy this and paste it over here. In this case, I'm going to say Chrome. So the same test is going to run multiple times on different browsers. So let me change the name to this here. I'm going to say one, two, and maybe add a third one here. This one will also run in Chrome. And I might as well change this error message here since I flipped the assertion. Recall that this test is now checking that the logo is not displayed on the screen. So we have our three tests. We want this first test to run on Firefox and these other two to run on Chrome. There is one other thing that we need to do, and that is to add a listener class for this test. So in the event that this test fails, we need to make sure that the test listener is collecting the information regarding the failure. So here we could say add listeners, and then we pass in the listener class. Our listener class is this one here, test listener. So I would just say test listener dot class. Now this is one way of doing it. We're telling our test class, this one here, where the test listener is, this one here. So you can think of this as a local way of specifying your test listener. But instead of specifying it here, I'm going to use the testng file over here. I'm going to specify the test listener here to make it global. So technically any test class could use it. So let me go back to my test and I'm going to remove this line right here. So let's go to the testng XML file. To specify the listener class, we do that inside the suite. 
So this is our test suite right here. So let me go inside my suite and I'm going to type listeners. Then we're going to add a new listener. It needs the class name. So my class is located in this IO package dot army now dot utilities dot test listener. Let me add some spacing here to make it more clear. So notice that each of these tests right here, this one and this one, are both referring to the same class, this test homepage class. And this is the one that contains our three tests. So in the last video, I only had one test in that class. And the same test was running on multiple browsers. We had it running on Chrome and Firefox. But now we have multiple tests and we want this test to run on different browsers. So we need to tell TestNG to pick only certain tests. So in this test right here, I'm running Chrome tests. So I need to be able to tell TestNG to only run the tests that are marked Chrome. So here we're going to say groups, because again, we're using the group information right here. This test right here belongs to the Firefox group, while this one over here belongs to the Chrome group, along with this one here. So in groups, we're going to say run, and then the groups that we want to include. So we're going to say include, and in this case, we want Chrome. So when this test runs right here, it's going to go to this test homepage class and it's going to look for any groups that are marked Chrome. So it's going to find this test right here and this other test over here. And it looks like we're getting an error here. It says the content of element type test must match this right here. So it looks like it wants things in a specific order. So what I need to do is to move this right here and put it over here. And that should take care of the issue. That's not really an error, it was just a warning, but it's good to follow conventions. So let's go ahead and copy this information right here and go to this other test. And in this case, we're going to say Firefox. And when this test runs, it's going to run any test that has been marked as Firefox. So what do you say? We run this test to see what we get. Let's go ahead and right click this XML file. And we're going to say run testng.xml. And we're seeing some issues with our test. If I scroll down here, I see that the test run says zero, so no tests were run. If I look over here, we see that the tests were skipped, and clicking around here doesn't give me any meaningful information. This error right here is coming from my test listener class. When a test gets ignored, it can be difficult to troubleshoot, but based on the experience, you will get better at it. In my case, I know that I made a mistake because I have this groups information over here. So here I've said run tests that are marked with this group information right here. So let me go to this class over here, where my tests are. We know that it's going to try to run the test based on the group information. However, there's one thing we need to remember. This class extends the base test class. If we look at this class over here, we have this before method. This before method runs before every single test method. We've told TestNG to only run tests that are marked Chrome or Firefox. This before method doesn't have any group information, so it will get ignored. And the way to fix this is not to add group information to this before method or after method. What we're going to do instead is to add an attribute that is called always run. So we're going to say here, always run equal to true. And I'm going to copy this right here and paste it over here because I also want my after method to run. That's the one that closes the browser. So what does always run do? So always run is pretty self-explanatory. We're telling testng to always run this method, no matter what. So even if we're said, only run tests that have this specific group, it doesn't care that this method doesn't have that group information because the method has been marked with always run. Now we should be ready to run this test. Let me go back to testng XML and I'm going to rerun this. We're seeing multiple browser windows opening. Here I have Chrome, Firefox, All my tests are done executing, and I can see here, test failed three, just as I expected. All tests have failed. Now I'm gonna scroll down here. This is the extent report file. We see extent report.html. Let me go ahead and double click this. And then I'm gonna go over here and open it in Chrome. And here we can see the three tests that ran. I have added this information to the extent report, which shows the group information. This one says Chrome, this one says Firefox, and this other one says Chrome. But the nice thing is that we have this categories tag right here. If I click this, I'm going to see Firefox and Chrome. So here I can select to see only specific tests. So let me click Firefox. 
and I should expect to see only one test because only one test was marked for Firefox. If I switch to Chrome, I'm going to see two tests. So hopefully your test ran without a hitch and you were able to see the browser category in the extend report. However, let's just say that for some reason, the extend report is not showing the different categories. Let me give you one pro tip that may help solve that issue. And I'm going to take you to the extend report documentation page. And here we find some important information. It says here, all methods on extend report are multi-thread safe. The recommended usage is to maintain a single instance of extend reports object for the test session. So we should only have one instance of extend report. In our case, we're running our test in parallel. So that may cause issues because when you run your test in parallel, you may have multiple instances of the same object. Let's have a look at this test listener class. This is where we define the extend reports. And to make sure that only one instance of extend report exists, we need to add one keyword here. We need to say static. This now makes this a static object, meaning that it belongs to the class. So naturally, we will only have one of these objects, as opposed to having multiple objects where we don't have the static keyword, and each instance is going to have its own copy of the object. In this video, we talked a lot about screenshots and running tests in parallel. If you would like to learn how to properly take screenshots when you run your tests in parallel, please be sure to check out the video on the screen. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.